please keep raising your hands. Uh, how many have tried to build a business? Uh, if you've tried to build a business and it has failed, uh, please keep raising your hand. Uh, okay, quite quite a few people as well. Um, uh, I've been an entrepreneur for a few years. I've had uh, I've had many failures. Uh, I, I graduated from college about five years ago. So since I was a student, I've been trying to build stuff, and and a lot of the, the businesses have failed. Uh, to me, it was to me it was kind of obvious that the reason why these businesses don't get off the ground was. Uh, I believed Zimbabwe wasn't quite ready for the stuff we're trying to bring. My my first startup was uh, was a was a business which sells uh, which sells music online, uh, and it was like six years ago. I, I was working with the guy called Solomon Kembo. Uh, it, it was we we called the website simfocal.com, but we we not only struggled to get uh, licenses because because we quickly learned that uh, when you are to be able to sell music, you needed to get rights, and even the artists don't own all the rights, and uh, the producers don't own all the rights. Uh, you you needed to also spend on an organization called Simura, uh, and they weren't very willing to work with us because we couldn't address the the piracy, the piracy issues they had. Uh, so that was the first problem. The second, which was the biggest problem, then was it was almost impossible to collect payments from people in Zimbabwe. We we couldn't even get a PayPal account, and, uh, and it was sort of like the first failure. But but I guess it was then because the market wasn't ready for for the stuff we're trying to launch. I, I guess if we try again now, we may we may be able to to, to make it. I think because it's getting better. We now have eco cash and stuff. So uh, so between then and now, I've been involved in a number of startups. A lot of them failed. Uh, Right now, I'm now working on uh, on evening, evenings and weekends on zimstate.com, which is uh, which has had some success and it's it's doing well actually. So so things are now starting to get better. But uh, I guess the reason why is also because the uh, the landscape has shifted. Uh, back then, back then it was very difficult to start a startup. Uh, these days, it's now easier. You can now collect payments. It's now easier to advertise. More people are getting online uh, and stuff. Uh, but before before we've even had this success, I've always been I've also always been trying to contribute to to the whole ecosystem. Uh, so you know when the when the whole ecosystem thrives, when you get more people coming online, when more people are able to make online payments, when more people understand take up uh, take startups and uh, more people are able to use the internet, like you, you stand a better chance of success. So, before I started working for Muzinda around January, uh, like I've, I've, I've been very actively involved in, the, in committees such as these ones, uh, trying to get together people and see how we can, how we can solve uh, these common problems. Uh, so when I, when I started working for Muzinda, to me, uh, Muzinda was for the first time in a long time a job where my personal interests, which are using technology, uh, working with a lot of bright people in startups, I sort of I learned with my core ideology, with my core ideologies, which are making a contribution to the whole ecosystem, and that's what we do at Muzinda Hub. What I try to do has never been done before. So we are a startup. It has never been done in Zimbabwe before. So we start up ourselves. We are we're going to be launching an incubator in April. We've, we've already identified some of the startups we're going to be working with. So we're going to try to give them resources to, to, make, uh, to make it easy for them to get their businesses off the ground so that they don't get the same problems we had six years ago when I tried to start uh, Zim Focal. So uh, we're going to be providing uh, office space, uh, internet access, uh, money to those who need money, uh, mentorship to those who need mentorship, trying to connect you with uh, with some uh, some early customers from this network we've uh, we've developing and which we are continuing to develop. Uh, we are we're trying to build an ecosystem which which makes it easy to build a business uh, and to start up. But but we're also we're also focusing on uh, on, on using the, the, the same 
science principles relating from one in startups. So we, we were discouraging people to, to spend something like six months trying to build an MVP and then uh, launching it to discover that you, you, don't, uh, you don't have a market for a product. So uh, we're going to try to encourage startups to, uh, to get their product to the market early and help them do that uh, and also help them uh, quickly uh, fail early if they are going to fail so that they can quickly fix what's wrong and, uh, uh, and they can get their startups off the ground without spending a lot of money there. So, so in short, that is what we do. We, we try to assist uh, startups to, uh, to put their products to market. I didn't prepare a long presentation, so so we're now we're now moving into the questions phase. Uh, is there anyone with any questions? You can you can ask me anything now. Uh, yes. Yes. Um. Okay. Right. Um. Yes. Uh, thank you for the very brief and very informative pre presentation. My quick question is: You are starting an incubator in April and you've already identified uh, candidates. What uh, criteria did you use to identify the, those candidates? And, okay, yeah, I'll start with that. Uh, we identified some of them. Uh, we, we did identify a lot. We're, we're going to start with five startups. We've identified about three. Uh, we're still talking to the third one, so, yeah, so I think it's going to be, I, I think we can say three. Uh, so we're, we're looking for two more. The criteria we used, we, we had at it. So we didn't we didn't exactly uh, make a call for applications or advertise it uh, because we sort of identified people who, who already have a product or already doing stuff, but we just need a, a bit more help to get their product to the next level. So so uh, so we're here for now. Maybe in the next intake we'll uh, we'll try to invite a large number of people. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, so I wanted to ask, um, so how can I join your incubator? Or let's say anyone else who wants to join the incubator. Do we apply or you find who you want for now, the, the first batch? Uh, do you want to join? Yes, let's say I would want to join. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we, uh, okay, like I said, we were here dancing. So we, we, we sort of like identified a number of uh, people who are, who are trying to, make, to, to talk to MC or we can how we can help them uh, to start working on their businesses full time and then uh, bring their products to market. So if you're interested, uh, if, if you're interested and you didn't know that we're here dancing, then you probably don't stand a chance. But now you do, you can, uh, I, I'll share my email address. Ah, you have my email address. But I'll also share my email address with those who, who may be interested. Uh, and you can just send me an executive summary and, and, and we'll, we'll consider you. Yeah. And then, okay, so you just take one batch each year? Uh, we, we're, going, we're going to try to, we're going to try to, uh, to, to take these businesses for six months, incubate them for six months, and then try to, to turn these businesses into businesses which are generating revenue and enough, to, enough revenue to support themselves after six months. It's, it's a bit ambitious, I know, but we think it can be done. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to ask so many questions. Okay, and then the yeah. incubation, uh, what do you give me as an, as an entrepreneur? You give me capital or it's an UPT deal? I mean, what should I be getting from you if I come to be incubated? Uh, uh, in short, it will be capital. Right. So, yeah, so, but not just, not just financial capital. I'm, I'm sure you know there are six types of capital. Uh, one of them is network capital, which, uh, and these, these are the stuff I'm going to be teaching uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, financial capital is, is, is the only important one, but uh, in a lot of businesses, it's probably the least important uh, form of capital. So the first one is uh, network capital, which are the different networks, the, uh, the different networks, the connections you get, uh, which may even be more important than cash. Uh, and the second type of capital we can help with is uh, reputation capital. For, for some startups, all they need is just just an endorsement or a good testimonial. Uh, we, we're, we're going to try to help with that as well. And then there is uh, instigation capital, which is uh, which is that ability to 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 get stuff done, to to, to knock on doors, to get those meetings with the CEOs you need to get. 
uh, and, and we're, we're going to help with that. I, I don't remember, off the top of my head, I don't remember what the other two are. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, but we, we try to help with stuff such as that, which uh, we, also, we also help with money if you need money, so. All right, thank you. Uh, one more thing, one other thing we're, we're looking at is people who are willing to work on their businesses full time. So, so we we'll only work with someone who's willing to do it full time. And That's good. Uh, thank you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move around with uh, the microphone. So if you have a question, oh, okay, there's another one at the back. <coughs> I understand you guys. You say from your presentation I heard that you provide. Um, resources, blah, 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 blah. Like I have said, um, Drew's Batir, um, they say I'm a, I'm a developer. I'm very good in PHP and some other programming languages. But um, I don't have the skill for on how to design this uh, graphic designing. Will you be able to support me to find uh, resources or the perfect person uh, to help me on my project? Uh, uh, okay, let me start by saying, besides looking for people who are willing to do it full time, another thing we're looking for is uh, is a team which is capable of uh, capable of building the product. So we're looking for inside the team uh, a typical startup team will have a designer, a developer, a, a, and a hustler or marketing person. So we well, those are those are the three skills we try to look for in a startup team. Uh, the one thing, like one thing which is uh, which is also going to be one of our strengths, uh, we're going to provide in our products is we're going to turn, we're going to turn, we're going to try to turn uh, entrepreneurs into T-shaped people. So our product is also going to have an emphasis besides helping you put that product to the market. We're going to have an emphasis on uh, training you in the technical skills uh, so that you you have this, a, a very uh, depth a very long depth of technical knowledge and also equipping you with those business skills you need uh, so you need to, we're going to equip you with a wide range of uh, business skills so uh, we're going to try to engage you to, to be t-shaped people um, I heard you were talking about uh, the forms of capital that you do offer and um, uh, the one uh, maybe I just need uh, some form of uh, clarification is uh, which you said uh, reputable uh, reputation capital. I, mean, um, I just want to understand uh, like uh, the way you are going to, to, to do it. Let's say uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I've been in the, mar in the market maybe for some years, but uh, my reputation was, you know, uh, poor or was going down or was declining. Uh, would you be able like, to help me to, to gain uh, the market value or the, or the, the market share again? Uh, okay, well, first of all, I've been working with uh, startups, so these are relatively new companies, so companies which haven't had a chance to, like, to, to, to make a bad name for themselves. Uh, and how I'm going to help is, uh, okay, this is not an announcement, it's off the record. One of the startups is going to be zimmo.co.zw. So with Zimmo, uh, what, what they need is, some people won't buy on Zimmo because they don't have confidence. Uh, so so you'd, find, you'd find I'm a buyer and uh, and Zimon is selling one product uh, for the same price the supplier is selling, but I would choose to walk all the way to the supplier to buy from the supplier when, when, when Zimon can uh, give me the convenience and the product uh, for the same price. So, so, so one thing they are going to need is maybe an endorsement or a testimonial to, to a prospective buyer. So that stuff we can help with. That stuff. Uh, we've we've created an ecosystem, a, a, a network of a network of other businesses who are willing to support the startups we're going to be working with. 
uh, and the names have just come up, the other two types of capital are uh, intellectual capital, which are, uh, which are the ideas, the smarts uh, in the company. So maybe sometimes you, your business just needs people who, uh, you just need smart people who can come up with good ideas. And the final form of capital is technical capital. So maybe you just need a developer or, uh, no, the second from last is technical capital. So maybe you just need a developer or someone with the technical skills you need to, to build it. And then physical capital, maybe you just need a desk to work from or space or internet access. So, so those are the other five types of capital we try to provide besides just funding. Right, uh, my understanding is that uh, six months come and go. So now, do we have any ways of uh, measuring or maybe ways of determining that uh, after these six months, has it been a successful exercise or not? So for example, that maybe after six months, then you have, when we have had some startups that you have been working with, uh, and then the six months has elapsed, uh, you just let, let, them, let them go, or maybe depending on the way you've uh, been recording the, the, the progress they've been making, there will be a chance that maybe you may continue working with them until you you, you think that they, 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 they can survive on their own. Uh, I'll be honest with you, when we when we when we're creating the business plan for Muzinda, we like there, there was one tough one, like it, it was very hard. And and not just not just after the six months, but even within the six months, uh, how do you measure progress? Uh, what if what if one startup is uh, it's not working very hard, and you find after three months they are not going to make it, or their product is not going to work, like do we kick them out? Uh, but how do we measure progress as well? Because these are startups, you can't, uh, you can't ask for a balance sheet or look at their profit and loss because they don't have all that stuff. They are probably not generating any revenue. So, we've, so, so what we've done is we've come up with a number of metrics uh, to measure how all startups are doing. So you, you probably, you probably have a website and you are and you're selling stuff, you are getting people signing up. So one way of measuring progress is how many people are signing up or how many people will continue to use your product two months after they've signed up or two weeks after they've signed up or how many people are, are closing their accounts. So we've, we've come up with a number of metrics. Uh, and what we do is when, when we start out with the startups uh, in April, we'll try to, uh, We'll try to we'll try to to draft a contract with the startup and agree on agree on certain milestones based on the business. Both every business is unique, and uh, we'll, and we'll try to make sure the startups continue to meet those milestones. Uh, they could be monthly or uh, every two months or three months. It will depend on the on the specific startup. But uh, uh, if the startups are not like like if they are sleeping on the job and they are not. Uh, they are not able to meet the milestones, or it looks like they are not going to make it, we may consider kicking them out. Mm, for example, I've got this good idea, an application called um, Best Cigarettes in Zimbabwe, and they are the marketing taking it up and the, the response is overwhelming and um, most of the companies in the market are appreciating the product and are come for support your organization. Will you able to support me or incubate me? Uh, if you have a great product uh, and it's promising and its potential is very high impact, uh, those are the people we are looking for. So yes, would would love to would love the opportunity to work with people like that. And I believe that Muzina it's it's under INF Foundation, a Christian organization. So you are saying you will be able to support me with my application that has to do with drinking or smoking or something that is not acceptable in your constitution. Uh, yeah, because of, because of where we get our funding from, we, there are certain types of businesses we won't be able to work with. So, so if you are into gambling or pornography or, uh, or, or, you, or, or, or products which promote smoking, 
because of the organization we Mbuzinda was born out of, we won't be able to support certain businesses. So, but would encourage you to to consider pivoting, or changing your business model. All right. Um, say, for instance, as an entrepreneur, I've got my ideas, I've got my capital, but um, I'm not too sure how successful I might be. Could I come to Pamzin? I'm sorry, to Mzinda and consult your services, um, take for instance um, the, the performance measurement that you mentioned. Could I come and consult you guys to help me and tell me, okay, if we go this way, you're likely to be successful. And on that note, if I come with my idea, because this is one of, um, I think, any entrepreneur here who's into development will agree that idea protection it's kind of like um, an open ground in, in, in Zimbabwe. You've got an idea, you pitch it to the wrong person. The next month, um, these guys will tell you, ah, it doesn't work. The next month you see it's out there, it's already working. So how protected am I if I am to come to consult you guys? Uh, okay, let me, let me start with the second question and, and, and just get it out of the way. Uh, protecting your idea uh, is going to be your responsibility. Uh, the entrepreneur. So, but, but, but it, what, what we can do is we can try to point you in the right direction. We, uh, we've been speaking to some intellectual property lawyers, for instance, and uh, we uh, and there are some people we know who can uh, help you protect your idea. But it's but, but it's your responsibility as an entrepreneur. Uh, and then the first question, uh, I, I guess, to answer it, we should get back to why why Muzinda was formed in the first place. Uh, and the idea is, uh, first of all, to create jobs, uh, to create wealth, uh, and to support uh, startups and projects, people who, are, people who are solving very important problems. So if there is any way we can assist, we're not going to be restricted to the five startups we do. Uh, you can, and you can check our track record. We've, uh, we've been doing a number of uh, projects to support innovation uh, and to support uh, entrepreneurs. So, yeah, so any way we can assist, that, that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any more questions? Going once, going twice. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tawanda. If you could just give him once again.